Okay, I'm Helena and we're here at the SIPS conference right at the beginning. The first person I'm interviewing is Ben Collegiuri from the University of Sydney. Maybe you want to briefly introduce yourself and let us know what you're doing. Yep. So my name's uh, Ben Collegiuri. I'm a professor at University of Sydney in Australia. Uh, and I do research on placebo and nocebo effects and mainly these days on nocebo effects and how we can prevent them. I always wondered if we want to prevent nocebo effects, shouldn't we not tell people about side effects? Like, how can we ethically do that? Because we do need to inform people, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's one of the big challenges. Um, if we wanted to get rid of nocebo effects, we could just not tell anyone about side effects and that would be great. But of course, it would violate informed consent. So we need to tell people that drugs cause side effects when they do. Um, so what I've been really interested in is whether we can come up with different communication strategies for warning people about side effects without inducing nocebo effects. So one of the things that we've been doing is looking at positive framing, which basically involves flipping the way we give information about side effects. So tradi traditionally, we'd say something like 30% of people will experience nausea from a drug, and that's negatively framed because we're focusing on the, uh, the unwanted outcome of experiencing nausea. Um, but we flip that and we positively frame it to say that 70% of people will not experience nausea. And so it's still informed consent because people are getting information that they might get the side effect, but we've positively framed it. And we found that that actually can reduce the side effects that people experience. Yeah. So I guess you have done a lot of studies on this. So how can you compare the percentages? So how much are the side effects reduced actually? Yeah, so it, it, we do have various ways of studying it. In one example, we expose people to virtual reality and we make them sick by putting them on a roller coaster. And then we give them different warnings beforehand about what they're going to get. So some people, 30% of you will experience motion sickness and the others, we say that 70% of you will not experience motion sickness. Maybe one question uh, that I was also interested in. Um, so... I'm a basic researcher, so where I come from, it's really difficult sometimes to think about the actual application of research for mm. practice. But I feel like uh, in what you do and a lot of uh, medical scientists also do is we, we have a direct application for the patients like you um, were telling mm. us about in the nausea study. Is there anything uh, else that you can, you can say that really directly translates to actual mm. practice? Yeah, so I think... For me, that's probably why I've become more interested in nocebo effects because I saw more translation options there. Um, so the, obviously the positive framing is one that we're really interested in. Uh, the other thing that I've been studying is something called latent inhibition, which is basically involves pre-exposing people to a treatment um, before they actually get the treatment itself. Um, so an example would be if if um, that we're interested in is chemotherapy. So when people get chemotherapy, it can be associated with nausea, obviously. Uh, and so we've been interested in looking at whether if we expose people to the chemotherapy ward, they get more used to that um, before they actually receive their chemotherapy, that might actually reduce the nausea, nausea that they experience. And so there's good experimental data um, showing these effects in things like pain. We're now looking to try and translate that to actual patients undergoing chemotherapy. Amazing.